What's up guys, DZ Fear, and I've been gone for a week, like I said I was going to. Um, so I was gone on vacation for my girlfriend's birthday last Friday, and then I was gone for my own birthday, which was uh, yesterday, Tuesday the 28th. Um, some cool things I picked up while I was gone, or for my birthday, uh, while I was gone, I picked up this oversized Primal Kyogre EX. Uh, a lot of you know I play Pokemon, and the only event I went to, I took Primal Kyogre so I saw this in the store, um, it was in like a $15 box set with like a couple packs and stuff. I just had to pick it up. It's really cool. Um, the Pokemon oversized cards are about the same size as an oversized Yu-Gi-Oh card. But um, these ones I think are a lot higher quality. Um, as you can see, like the whole thing is shiny in the exact same places that the actual card are. Uh, or the actual card is. Um, where the Yu-Gi-Oh ones tend to just be like a printed gold lettering and then not actually a hollow. Uh, so that was really cool. Picked that up. I also um, picked up a gray spellground. Uh, a lot of you have seen other people use these. I mean, it's just uh, OG94 gray. I'm really excited to use this in future videos um, as well as dueling. I've been looking to pick one of these up for a while, but I wanted to buy a good condition one. So I just decided to do that for my birthday. And then uh, also this really cool hobby league mat um with crystal beast on it i got from my friend ricky that he gave it to me and it is hot as fuck um a lot of you know i love crystal beast monsters i have like the whole deck max rarity um and this hobby league mat is really old pretty hard to find and it is cool looking um so that's what we're going to be using for this deck profile as well as all uh later crystal beast deck profiles but i just want to show you guys those um anyway to get into the actual deck profile this is what I probably would have played at Toronto if I was playing in it. Um, I'll be working at it, so maybe Aisha will use this deck or something. But um, it's just uh, Teleport Medulce. So I'll kind of go through the cards real fast, and then we'll talk about ones that are more weird as we go along. Uh, so 3 Angeli, 3 Magdalene. Uh, this version, 3 Hoot Cake, is pretty good, uh, even though most conventional, build conventional builds only play 2. Uh, 2 Messenger Lotto. Two Cat Waffle, uh, and then the Psychic Engine is two Serene Right Psychic Witch, one Psychic Commander, and one Esper Girl. Um, so, what I found with Medulces, or I mean, what anyone can find with Medulces, is that if you start out your turn with two monsters, um, the most damage you can generally do if you don't have like a huge setup is um, 5,900. Uh, that's if you don't already have Ticket or Chateau. Um, but when you have three monsters, you can like OTK your opponent a hundred different ways. Um, so the two big engine or the three big engines I see to uh, put that third monster on board are Instant Fusion, uh, a Warrior Engine, and then the Teleport Engine, which I'm using. Uh, the Instant Fusion Engine is okay, but I feel extra deck space is already too tight, um, so I didn't want to play that one. And then the Warrior one is probably more similar to this one because like with this one. Um, you have tuner monsters, so you can make Beast and Barkeon um, to just auto-win. But the difference is, is that with the Warrior one, if you go first, you can't usually make um, Beast because you'd have to have uh, Spell Striker and TG Striker because um, the TG Striker can't be special summoned if you're unless your opponent controls a monster. So that means that if you're going first, you would have to have like Rhoda and TG Striker. You'd have to have like both Strikers in hand because you couldn't just uh, special the Striker and then normal summon level 3. Um, in this version though, all you have to have is uh, any of your level 3 Earths and an e Telly, and then you can bring an Esper Girl. Um, alternatively, you could have like an e Telly and the Esper Girl. So there's a lot uh, greater chance of opening Nature Area Beast, which is super critical against Necroz, and that is kind of um, the main reason why I wanted to play this engine. Also, uh, these three cards by themselves do more than TG Striker or Spell Striker do by themselves. Like Serene Psychic, which you can just kind of float on, um, and Psychic Commander at the very least is a 1400 attack uh, beater, um, almost 1900 attack because of its effect. Um, so I just felt they were better to draw, and then mainly that you could actually nature your beast on the first turn with this engine. Um, and then lastly, we're just playing uh, three copies of Effect Failure. Um, kind of like in all my deck profiles lately, I'm just not a fan of getting Trished right now. Um, so until Trish is, or until Necroz is like completely neutered, 
I think you have to play three Valor in decks like these that uh, just lose if you get trished. Um, and then also in this deck, it fuels your Hoot Cake, which is nice. So if you go second and your uh, Valor is in your opening hand with a Hoot Cake instead of an Anjali, you can just Valor anything your opponent does, and then you have a Hoot Cake play. So that's it for the monster cards. Moving on to the spells, we have two copies of Medulto Chateau as well as one ticket. Pretty standard lineup there. Uh, three e -Telly, pretty much the reason we're playing this version. Uh, two Forbidden Lance. You don't really need MST in the main because mainly you're just trying to resolve like one queen and then that gets rid of all your opponent's back row. So you don't really need MST just to deal with one of them. Um, then Regeki, uh, Book, as well as Double Summon. Uh... I like always bounce back with double summon. Sometimes I just like hate it, don't want to play any of it. Um, and like right now, I really want to play two of them because you really just want to OGK your opponent with this build. Um, and you'll see that in the trap lineup, especially. But uh, like obviously, opening two double summon is pretty much the worst you could ever draw. Um, so I guess we're just going to play one of those uh, for the traps. Um, like I said, we're OTK-oriented here, so we're playing two copies of Divine Wrath, uh, as well as two copies of Debunk. Um, basically, you just don't want to get Valked, and these cards help you not get Valked. So if you go uh, first and open with Jelly, and then like any other monster card in one of these, you can usually OTK your opponent on the second turn, um, which is fantastic, and uh, happens more often than you might think. Um, there's lots of different ways to OTK your opponent, but uh, you obviously can't OTK through a Necroz of Valkyrus, so Debunk and Divine Wrath help against that. If your Necro or if your locals isn't Necroz filled, you can swap these out for the two trap stuns that are in the side deck. Uh, but my locals definitely Necroz filled, so we're playing Debunks instead. Uh, we're also playing two copies of Break the Skill because Unicorn is really fucking annoying. Um, one Palooza. Uh, and then just Emptiness, Warning. And I've considered, if you're going to swap anything out of this deck, uh, outside of like the debunks for the Trap Stuns, uh, Emptiness is definitely cuttable. Um, sometimes it, is, it really just doesn't help you um, if your hand's really bad. So you can definitely swap out Emptiness for a second Palooza or a second Double Summon if you want to go a little bit more aggressively than I have. Um, next I'll show you guys the Extra and Side, which I forgot to get out of the deck box. <clears throat> uh, the extra deck is extremely cramped, so we have two queen, one pudding cess thingy, uh, exciton knight, diamond dire wolf, dweller, cowboy, and ragna zero. So that's it for the rank fours. Um, there's no casteller and there's no 101, uh, there's no number 80. The space is really just too tight. And um, in Castell and 101's case, all your, all your level 4s are Medulce's, so you're always going to be making Queen instead, um, and the Queen's is better than those. So we're playing a Diamond Dire Wolf, which is a card I've been cutting from Extra Dex, but in this deck it's useful because you can actually um, like pop back around and like combo off, which is really helpful. So that's why Diamond Dire Wolf made the cut while some other cards didn't. Um, Diamond Crab King is also an option if your locals is plagued with... Uh, Towers Turbo. Um, for the rank threes, we're playing two copies of Levier. I th I think despite how um, cramped the extra deck is, you have to play two of this card because I find myself going into the second one quite often. It's it's infinitely more useful than a card like um, Invoker, which one I'm only playing one of, uh, just because it like like it's really just live at all points of the game. If you can put two level threes on board, you've probably gone through a jelly. Um, and then one mech equipped engineer, uh, mainly just to get through Valk, but also to have like some kind of defensive option. This card is uh, switchable with Ghost Rig Alucard. I've definitely considered it that. And in a few cases, uh, Alucard has come up in testing where I just haven't had it available. Um, and then we're also playing uh, the Naturia Beast. Sorry for the gold rare. Um, and then <laughs> uh, Barkeon. Uh, obviously. Really important for being the Necroz matchup, and then like Barkeon is good against uh, like Satellers and Burning Bits, which is actually um, I would say a worse matchup for this deck. Trap trap based decks are really tough for Middle Jays because um, generally without Double Summon or Palooza, you're just stuck with your normal summon. Um, and then lastly, 
just kind of for fun, playing one Trish. You can make this either with, like, uh, if you, like, Cat Waffle Hoot Cake, and then E-Telly, that makes it. Um, or, like, just a Hoot Cake and an E-Telly if you have a card engrave, because you can go Hoot Cake, Mess, and Gelato, and then E-Telly into Esper Girl. But uh, Trish comes up. It's not always the greatest play, but sometimes flashy plays are just really fun. Uh, so that's why we're playing that. Um, other options that you could include, like I said, Ghost of Alucard, number 80 is pretty good. I don't think you really need Castell or 101, but uh, Diamond Crab King is definitely a viable option. For the side deck, um, I felt like this is a pretty good side deck, um, just for standard metagames. We have three copies of MST. Not really in the main, but certain floodgates just really hinder this deck. Like, uh, macro is really annoying. Uh, D Fissure is fairly annoying. Not as bad as macro, but it's pretty, pretty annoying. Um, but namely, Goes and Match and Rivalry of Warlords are just make your deck literally unplayable. So that's why MST is in there. Uh, two Lancia, two Maxi. Um, triple Fairy Wind, Floodgates, like I said, are really bad against you, or really bad for you. And this is also really good against Cliff Forts, so that's why we're playing that. Uh, two Traps done, like I said, if you play in a locals that isn't, like, Necrods filled, you can play Traps with instead of Debunks, but, uh, overall, I just think Debunks safer in the main. Like, you should be, because, like, you want... Uh, the debunks for, like, the best deck of the format, where, like, the trap stuns... Like, you want to be the best deck of the format, game one, as a... Like, you should just naturally beat decks that aren't Necros. So I think debunks just safer to main, even if it's a, de even if it's a dead card. Um, and it's occasionally good against, like, other decks, like Burning Abyss and Shedals and... Uh, any deck playing Valor or Maxi, you can randomly debunk. Um, and then we're playing two Shadow Mirror, like I said, Burning Abyss is, like, the toughest matchup. Um, and then one Torrential, mainly for Pendulum-based strategies. So hopefully you guys enjoy this deck profile, and uh, I will see you later. Goodbye.